Welcome back to Virtual School Assembly. Today our guest is Daniel Campo McLeod. Danielle is a former Paralympic swimmer who represented Canada at two Paralympic Games, winning a total of three gold medals, two silvers, and a bronze. She has held a total of eight world records. As a result, she knows what it takes to achieve goals. Her story is about succeeding against the odds. It's about the challenges she's faced and the determination it took for her to persevere and to succeed. Danielle has received numerous awards to honor her significant contributions and achievements, including her commitment to the highest ideals and qualities of citizenship and humanitarian service. Uh, Danielle, we're so excited to have you on the show today. Let me hand you the virtual microphone yeah, and the stage is yours. Take it. Thank you. And thank you, Tyler. And hello, everybody. I am so honored uh, to be here. Um, it is a great to be able to uh, just connect and reach out to all of the students and all of the young people across the country and, and world that get access to this. Um, so yeah, my story is really uh, unique and interesting and, and changing every day. So I'll take you back to um, where it started. In 1985, I was born to a very um, sports oriented family. I have two older brothers. They're five and six years older than me. They always played sports, um, hockey. They were into football, all different kind of things that they could uh, get their hands on. Um, and then I was born and um, obviously a girl. And my mom still jokes to this day that the whole our whole town could hear her scream when she found out it was a girl. Um, and as I started walking and, and developing, my, my parents noticed that I would fall a lot or I'd take a few steps and I'd put my arms up to be held to be picked up. Um, so around the age of two, I was I actually diagnosed with uh, muscular dystrophy, which is a progressing muscle weakness uh, disorder. So the muscles in my legs were a lot weaker um, than, than somebody else. So it made walking and running and diff different things like that very um, difficult. I had to have some surgeries, um, and my pair, and I needed to do physiotherapy every day. So I had to go into really painful stretching of the muscles and pulling and trying to get my muscles to be their best. So my parents, being uh, really involved in sports, thought, you know, what else can we do? How else can we make this work and get the same physio? Um, and so they put me in the water, and we did uh, physiotherapy as a form uh, of swimming and being in the water and stretching those muscles. And I loved the water. Uh, it was a place of freedom for me. You know, you don't have to run or, or jump in the pool. You're the, you're the same as everybody else. So I could do what my friends could do. And I joined a local summer swim team. Um, and it was there at the age of seven that a coach actually approached my parents and said, hey, she's really good. Have you ever thought of putting her in competitive swimming? Um, now you have to understand, I come from a hockey family being up here in Canada. Um, so like we're, we deal with frozen water and ice, right? They had no idea what swimming was and never had any swimmers in our family. Um, so they said like, yeah, sure. Let's, let's give it a try. Um, so I joined our local, uh, swim team and I started actually train transitioning from having fun to, is this something that, you know, I like to compete. I loved the adrenaline of being on the, the starting blocks and diving in for those races and, and being able to compete. Um, and so I started to swim more and more. And as I swam, those strong muscles and my healthy muscles got a lot stronger. Um, but when I think back to just before I kind of launched onto an international level, I remember school was difficult. Uh, I was bullied a lot as a kid. I, walk, I walked a little bit different. I, uh, I jumped differently. I couldn't do the same things as my friends. So back in grade school, kids would, would play really mean games, games like ditch and yell, where at recess they would yell, ditch and yell, and all run away from me. So swimming was really a healthy outlet for me, something that I could do. Like I said, I kept training, I kept swimming, um, and a coach approached me and said, hey, Danielle, what are your goals in the water? And I said, I just love to race. I want to see as, as far as I can go to race. I want to I be a part of the Olympic team one day. As I started to understand what living with a disability meant and what that was going to look like, um, I learned about the Paralympics and that the Paralympics are parallel to the Olympics. So the only difference is that the athletes that compete in the Paralympics have overcome some pretty physical challenges and, and have a physical disability. So I said, well, that's it. I want to go to the Paralympics. Um, and so I started training. I was really, really young. I was only about 11 or 12 um, at this age. And my coach had said to me, you know, let's, let's just keep training and we'll set our goals and we'll work towards those goals. And we aren't going to let anything stop us. And let's, let's keep going. 
At the age of 13, I qualified for my first Canadian team um, and we were going to Christchurch, New Zealand. So like all the way across the world. Um, and I was really excited. Now I was this like skinny, scrawny 13 year old that just loved life and bubbly and loved to compete. And I got to New Zealand um, and I met one of, my comp one of my competitors from Iceland who was like six, six and built. So like I was terrified. Um, and she looked at me and she was like, well, what are you gonna do? You're so little. I dove in and I actually broke my very first world record at that competition. And I won um, my first gold medal, followed by three other world records and three more gold medals at my first world championships at 13 years old. Um, and I was so ecstatic. Uh, it was, well, I mean, just amazing to get to compete on an international level um, and, and know that I was on the right track for my goals. I continued to push through um, and I trained and I qualified for our 2000 Paralympic team, which was going to Sydney, Australia. Um, I got to Australia. I was 15 years old going in as the world record holder and the favor to win swimming in Australia, which is like their national sport. So everybody knows the swimmers. It was loud. It was crazy. It was a dream come true. I dove in the pool. I swam my first race and I missed the gold medal by one one hundredth of a second. And so I was like, oh, I, I wanted to be happy because you're at the Olympics, but everybody knows when you train, you train to just do your best. I left everything that I could in the water, but I still wanted that. I had that hunger for that gold medal. I had to regroup. I really had to think and talk to myself and my coaches and my support team about how do you, you know, we're all going to experience setbacks and how do we change our way of thinking and just give it all I got the next day. So I swam um, the next day, my favorite race, which is the 100 meter freestyle. I touched the wall first. I heard my mom screaming in the background. I didn't see my dad because he had actually passed out from the excitement. Um, and so it's something we tease him about today. But now I, I get to have this uh, really pretty awesome gold medal um, from that race and, uh, and the memories of that. I swam two more races, won uh, two more gold medals and set a Paralympic record. Um, and it was amazing. I, uh, I came home from those Olympics and my world changed. I was now a 15 year old world record Olympic gold medalist. Um, and I really took a moment to really think about what are my future goals and what do I want these medals to represent? Um, so I was committed to traveling around to schools and high schools and grade schools and just talking to kids about, you know, we're all going to face obstacles. We're all going to, you know, we have to set goals. We have to have a dream and you have to not be willing to let anybody take those dreams away from you and just be committed to being your best and your best has to be good enough. And that was a motto for four years that I shared and I walked around as a gold medal Olympic swimmer and I said, you know, you have to be committed to being your best. I kept training. I was, uh, I had the joy of representing Canada again at another Olympics in uh, Athens and in 2004 and I dove into my first race and I placed fourth and I was devastated. This was not a position I had ever held before where you don't belong on the podium. I got out of the pool, walked over to the media and they all turned because they wanted to talk, of course, to the people who had won medals. And I was like, oh my goodness, this, this just happened. This wasn't my goal. This isn't what I set out to do. Um, and again, a lot of self-talk about, you know, okay, this wasn't the fourth place finish wasn't something that I wanted, that I wanted, but what am I here to do? And what mistakes did I make in that race? And what can I do better the next time? I dove in for my second race and I touched the wall and I won the bronze medal. And to this day, this is my favorite medal from Athens because I gave everything I had in this race. I swam a perfect race. I couldn't have done it any better. I breathed when I needed to breathe. I kicked as hard as I could. I stretched as far as I could. And the results at the end were the bronze and the bronze was good enough because it was my best. So for four years before that, I had been challenging people to be their best and to be comfortable with what happens after that. And I got to experience what that's like. Still to this day, 20 years later, I would tell you that that race is my favorite race because I got to experience that adrenaline of giving it and really leaving everything that you have. Um, 
And I do that daily. I still challenge people to live their best lives. Um, I set goals to go to university and complete a degree in social work. I work for an amazing non-for-profit organization, Muscular Dystrophy Canada, helping people live their best lives. Um, and I get to travel the world, inspiring people to set goals and achieve their dreams. My life has drastically changed in the last month. Um, I had a phone call uh, from a doctor to tell me that they've done some amazing science and research and found that I don't actually have the form of muscular dystrophy that they thought I had when I was born, um, that I have a different neuromuscular disorder and that there's treatment. So I started treatment just a month ago and I am experiencing new muscle strength, um, no more pain. Uh, growing up with muscular dystrophy, it was extremely painful. Um, and I'm a mom of four kids, so I'm really, really busy. And I'm getting to live my best life every, every day now by experiencing new things. I gave a bath to my, my one-year-old son all by myself yesterday. I played on the floor and played dinosaurs, all things that I could never do. But I've um, I keep getting asked, you know, are you mad that your diagnosis was, was not correct for, the, for 33 years? And I have to tell you that obstacles teach you how to, how to grow. They teach you how to reach your challenges, living in pain and dealing with fatigue. I found my own unique way of doing things. I found my own way of, of overcoming. Of course, there were times where you need to wrap yourself around your supports. You need to have people that you can have a good cry with, that you can just say, you know, today's not a great day, but tomorrow is going to be better. Um, so I'm not angry about the misdiagnosis at all. I'm thankful for the journey that I've got to go on. I'm thankful that I get to share this new journey with so many other people. And, and my mission is about challenging people to live their best lives. And I'm so excited to be here today and, and to talk to everybody. Wow, what an incredible story, Danielle. And I, I, I didn't know this surprise ending, so I'm excited to talk about that. But before we get there, I, I have to go back to kind of the beginning for you, um, because you mentioned as you were a kid, you kind of got teased a little bit and recess wasn't always fun. Um, as a parent, I know how hard that can be for kids. Um, I have a, my, my third oldest, so just like in your family, the third, um, he has a muscular disorder. It's, it's not nearly as severe as muscular dystrophy. He just has low muscle tone and it, it, it keeps him from doing some of the physical things that he'd want to do, but he's bumped up into some of that teasing and some of those challenges. It's easy for kids to give up. When, when they're in a situation like that, when people are against them, it's easy to curl up, go into the corner, quit doing things. What was it for you that helped you to just keep moving forward and, and get past kind of that, that challenge? Yeah, great question. Um, I think you really always need to know your why. Why are you doing, why are you doing something? And it doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be a goal like going to the Olympics. It, it can just be a goal of, of doing your best that day um, and, and really being committed to that. Um, I also am a strong believer in our, in our supports. Finding those people that build you up and being able to be vulnerable and say, you know what, today's a bad day and I need, I need that hug or I need somebody to say it's going to be okay. Um, I remember what growing up and, and being teased, I had those few people in my corner that I could go to my mom, my aunt, um, where I could just kind of have that conversation to say today really hurts and it's okay to name it and feel the pain, but really knowing your why, why are you doing what you're doing and, and what's going to be your, your steps of success. So maybe today I'm getting really teased, but you know what? I put my shoes on all by myself or, or I still played soccer the best way I could play soccer. Um, so knowing, you know, what makes you, you, and, and I think people, we get bullied when people don't understand. So being okay to be that advocate and say, you know, this is why I do it this way. Yeah. Now, again, that's a really hard thing for kids to do. I think of a 10 year old or a 15 year old and, and having goals and having a why that's one thing, but being an advocate, that's even scarier. I think for a lot of kids the same. I am different. I'm recognizing that. And this is what we can all do. Uh, obviously, right now as a world, we're, we're looking at this Black Lives Matter movement and other things where we're trying to understand other people and other cultures. Uh, do you have any advice for kids on what they can be doing right now to maybe they're not that minority, maybe they're not different, but they still need to understand other people. Is there anything that they can be doing to to be more aware of the people around them and, and the things, the challenges that other people have. 
Yeah, absolutely. Don't be afraid to ask. I, uh, I think one of the, my greatest memories from being um, a younger kid and, and having, you know, those bullies is actually one of the bullies came up to me and said, why do you walk like that? And I, so I had the minute to say, you know, I was born a little different. My legs don't work the same as you. And my parents explain it that they're just, they just don't work the same and that I have other muscles that are really strong. Um, and, you know, still to this day, I still remember her name um, and we became really good friends. And she took that moment to have the courage to just ask, not be afraid to ask, you know, what does life look like for you? Right. What does it look like through your eyes? Right. That's awesome. Um, now, I, I want to shift kind of into your competitive swimming for a minute. M most kids watching this are never going to step on any podium, let alone the Olympics or anything like that. But, but many of us have physical goals. We want to accomplish great things and we want to be challenged. Because you were competing at a young age, you had to deal your whole life basically with time management, you know, juggling your athletics with school and with everything else. Do you have any ideas or tips for kids who are looking at that situation right now where they have too many things going on, they don't feel like they can get it all done? What did you do when you were a kid to be able to juggle all those things? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that, and that's so important, being able to figure out how do you, how, you know, how do you best use your time? Um, so for me, it was really about writing down and keeping an idea of, you know, where I needed to be having, you know, the supports of, you know, at what point am I going to do my schoolwork and focusing in, on that um, and being flexible, knowing that when you set a schedule and you set a plan and, you know, Tyler, having four kids, when you set a plan, that that plan's not going to happen. So it's being able to be flexible that, you know, this is my goal. This is what I'd like the outcomes to look like. And these are the ways I can achieve that. So I can do my best 15 minutes here and giving yourself grace. We got to give ourselves a lot of grace in this new world. We're all learning new things as we go. Um, and again, being okay with asking for help when you need some help organizing or, or you need some help, you know, I had great coaches that I could open up to my coaches and my teachers and say, you know, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Can you help me figure this part out? Um, and so not having to have the pressure on your shoulders that you need to know it all and be okay and hundred percent great all the time. Right. Cool. Um, with your swimming career, you already mentioned your, your favorite race or the most memorable race. I, I think a challenge that we have as adults, and so I want to put this out there for kids now because this is going to be a challenge when you're an adult, is we look back at some of those accomplishments we had when we were younger. And it was great to have them, but for too many adults, it holds them back from setting new goals and moving forward now. And so recognizing all you were able to do in the pool as a kid, what has helped you to continue move forward, continue to set goals and, and to do new and better things? I think I, I always believe in dream big. When, when you can really have a dream and you set those little goals to accomplish those dreams, you get to set bigger dreams. You get to set bigger goals. Um, so now when I look back, um, enjoy the moment right? Really be present in what you're doing and enjoying the moment because those feelings will help you to carry on and to achieve. So everything I do, whether it is day-to-day -day activity or setting that really big dream, I, I really focus on how does it make me feel? Checking in with myself and making sure that I'm doing this because I want to, I want to do this and I'm committed to this. And then really, you know, check what do I need to be successful? Um, and really setting those goals. My goals at a young age were to be an Olympic swimmer and to, you know, and to be able to hold that title and I stay connected to those feelings. 20 years later and I can close my eyes and still remember what it felt like to win my first gold medal. And it's the same as when I set a goal. Um, university, after I had completed my swimming career, my goal was to get a degree in university. And walking across that stage, when I close my eyes, it's the same feeling as winning that gold medal because it was the same in my world. It was the same goal and same dream. So hold tight onto those feelings. Right. Well, and part of the, your story that I love so much is because I've done some homework on who you are and what you do, and you've continued to reach and, and do really important things. Um, the work you're doing right now with Muscular Dystrophy Canada is fantastic. And you've you've gotten a lot of recognition for your work along the way, and we won't go into all those things. Um, but I do want to know a little bit more about the work you're doing now. What are the things that you're doing now in, in your profession, be it as a keynote speaker or uh, with your 
um, involvement in these different organizations. What is bringing you the most happiness and fulfillment now um, that you've moved kind of a little bit past your athletic career? Seeing people set their goals and live their best lives 110% is what uh, brings me my most joy. Um, so people will reach out to me after, after talks. They'll, you know, they'll find me on Facebook. They'll reach out and they'll say, hey, I set this goal and this is how I'm going to achieve it. And I love connecting and hearing that. Um, I love knowing that my story and my journey has a lot of obstacles, has a lot of struggles. But if I can make one person feel empowered to set a goal and achieve that goal, then I know I've done my job. Um, and I believe you give back, right? Give it back. These are these Olympic medals and, and my successes are not my own. It's because I've had so many amazing people, my family, my friends, my coworkers, um, so many amazing people in my corner that help me to be the best version of me so that I get to help people be the best version of them. So uh, just be, I would say, just being able to give it back and being committed to I want everybody to experience joy the way I've gotten to experience joy and knowing that life isn't going to be perfect. Things aren't going to be the way we plan, but it can still be amazing. All right. Well, now to wrap up, I, I, we have to talk about the last month we or do. two because how awesome is that, that, you know, despite the misdiagnosis and, and whatever, however your life might've been different had that happened before it has happened now. So how, how has your life changed in the last month? What are some of the things that you're doing now that you weren't, you mentioned um, bathing your baby and stuff like that, but uh, what are some of the highs now that you're looking at? Uh, the highs are the little day, little everyday things that I never imagined. The number one thing is I am completely pain-free, um, which is unbelievable because I lived with a, really a lot of pain, probably un, I really didn't even understand how much pain I was in until I started um, this. So being uh, this new diagnosis came with a casual phone call from my doctor who said, Hey, um, we found something. Um, and I think we can start this treatment and let's, let's see where it goes. And instantly um, getting to experience the, the, the muscle building and, and the decrease in fatigue. Um, so every day is, is a new day. Every day is exciting. I used to never be able to climb up a flight of stairs without pulling myself up the stairs using the railing. Um, and just this week, I climbed up, climbed up my first flight of stairs with my hands like this. Um, getting to experience what my body feels like now in the water with this new strength is really neat to kind of have fun with that. Um, and the everyday little things. I took my family, we went on a family walk and I pulled the wagon. Um, all the things that I used to not be able to do that now I'm getting, I'm playing dinosaurs on the floor every day with my little ones. And so all that fun stuff that I get, my uh, teenagers tease me that now I have to carry the laundry baskets upstairs. <laughs> so I'm not really sure this is all great, but uh, it definitely, uh, yeah, every day is a new day. So it's really right. exciting. With this newfound strength, are any thoughts about getting back into competition or is that a thing of the past? Oh, I feel like I um that might be a thing of the of the past. I love swimming. I swim with my family. I swim mm -hmm. for exercise. Um, I love competing. So you never know. I, I right. challenge my husband. I think every day because I'll always be like, maybe I'll go into rowing today. And so uh, yeah, you never know. I love competing. So maybe on a uh, like senior level, which sounds crazy to get to say that now, but uh, <laughs> you never know where uh, what door will open next for sure. Right. Cool. Well, Danielle, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. It's been a pleasure to have you on and to hear your story uh, and your encouragement for, for kids. If, if kids want to know more about your story or, or follow or connect with you on, online, is there a best place for them to go? Yeah, absolutely. You can find me on, uh, on Facebook at Danielle Compo McLeod. You can find my page there. I'm also on uh, Twitter, same name. Um, and yeah, check me out and, and uh, definitely connect. I'd love to hear your goals, your dreams and, and reach out for sure. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you.